Hello there and welcome to the studio. Today we are going to be talking about a very important feature on your Akai MPC device that you might not even know exists. Well, yeah, except for those that are using the MPC X and the MPC X Special Edition, then you might not even know you need, right? Which is something that actually once you learn how to use it, it's going to make your workflow a lot more interesting. And that feature will be the locate feature right on your mpc device those that are using the mpc x series you will definitely have your locate button right on the hardware in itself but those that are using the mpc either the live or the one series you will definitely have to double tap on your time bar to access the locate features so the locate feature actually helps you to basically target exact spot where you want to place events when you are recording your event especially for those people who are used to maybe playing keyboards or those who are used to recording audios directly onto their devices you know this locate feature will help you to pinpoint the exact location where things should be placed and without you know altering all the other events that is around that particular uh spots that you actually want to do your recording is like you want to record over an existing recording and locate feature can actually help you to do that you know so we're going to be talking about the punching and the punch out the auto record feature and then we're also going to talk about the start and the end settings where you can actually specify a loop point on your device you know most people have seen a lot of videos talking about the fact that you cannot set your loop point just like you would do on your door and that is actually not true you can actually do that on your device you can set your looping points even on your door as you set it on your door you can set it also on your device and then you cannot specify your punching and punch out auto record we'll teach you how all those things work in a gf so let's dive right in all right so welcome back now for those of you who are using the x family you have all the features controllable using these keys here this locate event then the start and the end then for those of you who do not have this you know keys on your device you can easily double tap on your time bar this double tap it once you double tap it that way this will show up and this is the locate features now let's come to let's use this particular uh, uh, sequence as an example if I come to the view here, let's say I want to play in something here and I don't want it to start from the very first bar, I don't want it to end at the fourth bar, maybe I just want to record it onto the second bar, just the second bar. Now, normally what you would do is probably maybe move your playhead to the second bar, then play, then you press uh, maybe record or overdub. Then you do play instead of play start, and then you will now try and record. But what if you already have some other things here that can lead you, you want it to lead you to that particular section where you are supposed to do your, uh, you know, your new recording, your new take. So this is applicable if you are using maybe audio or MIDI track. But most of the time, I find myself using it a lot when I'm doing audio take, when I'm taking, you know, vocals. And I can easily say, okay, you know what? Just continue singing the song when you get to this place i can actually know what exactly i want to pick maybe what i didn't like there i can easily set my punch in and punch out time this is what i have right now basic something very basic now what i need to do is let's say for instance i come in here uh, let me go back to the MIDI. Yeah, here. Let me see what I can put in here. Uh, yeah, I think this can work. Okay, so let's do this way. Let me just play and record this. Then I'll show you how everything works. So come back here to record. Hit play start. This way. this so I'm okay.
Now, that is what I've done here, right? It's basically what I've just made, something simple that can go along with that beat. Then let's say uh, I make a mistake at this particular spot. This, take a look at it from here. Let's say I, make, I made a mistake on the second bar. And normally what you would do is you would delete either every time. I know somebody will just quickly hit undo. You quickly hit undo. It doesn't, you know, it's kind of like um, nullifies all the, the good ones you've done. You can literally just punch in the, the, the new ones or the ones you made a mistake. You can easily correct it by just, you know, using your locate button and then punch in and punch out. And you can record on that spot exactly. Now, this is how it works. Double tap. I'm going to be using double tap for the sake of those who I know might not have the MPC XXC or X because it works regardless. It works on MPC X. It also works if you do not have MPC X. So, because I just press locate, as you can see, the same thing that pops up is when you double tap here, you know, pops up. So, it is the same thing we're talking about. Do you understand? So, just double tap and then it comes up. Now, from here, Again, let's go back here. Let me show you something. I want to redo what is on second bar. I don't need to delete it. I don't even need to take it off because the new thing I'm trying to put in will override what is there. And I will still be pressing it. You know, anything I press will not be recorded until it gets to the specific spot that I want to punch in and punch out. That's actually how that works. I know um, uh, the old producers by now they know actually the concept of punching and punching out so we'll hit come back to locate i want to edit just the second one so i come here it is advisable that you start with the very punch out section set it free before you send the punch in because it will not allow your punch in to go higher than the punch out so you can see no matter how much i turn it it can only go get as high as two four because punch out is three one but if I change my punch out to maybe like 3-4, then this again will be able to climb up. Do you understand? So we're dealing with from 2-1 to 3-1. So basically, once you do this and you set this to in, so this is punching and punch out. Once it's enabled, if you close this, you will see right there from 2-1, two, 2-2, two, one, two, 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 three, two, four, you can see there's a red line. This red line means you can punch in anything on your MIDI event. If you're using the audio track, you can say anything, you can start singing even before this comes in, once you hit your record. It will not record it until it gets here. And I'm gonna show you that now, so you note that. I'm gonna take this back to the beginning. This playhead, back to the beginning. Let me do this so you can actually see everything. Yeah, this is everything. The, play, the playhead is back to the beginning. This is the part we want to punching and punch out from or oh, punching in here we're punching out here that means this is where i want to record right but i will also be playing everything as the playhead is moving it will only start recording once it gets here it will not record anything here and once it gets to the punch out it will stop recording that is the first tip so let's do that right away uh, i will also hit record right from the beginning as you can see then i will do play start Did you see what just happened? Everything here got replaced by the new one I just, you know, punched in. That is the new keys I just punched in. And it did not affect, if you can remember properly, when I started even playing it, with it hasn't even started recording when I was already pressing some keys on my own keyboard. And I, I was playing everything alongside, but it didn't record anything before or after that punching and punch out spot. So imagine you have an artist that you are trying to record, maybe like the audio, then you want to do maybe like the first verse. You don't need to start from the whole beginning until you get there. Okay, now you cannot start recording. Just so you are sure that you're not recording where you're not supposed to record. You can just put a punching spot at the start of where you want that verse to start and then at the bar where you want the verse to end, you can punch out. Then you can actually have that your 
uh, artists continue to record and it will only stay within that region the recording will not exceed that region then also you can easily use that to say oh maybe there's a, a place where you feel oh this is not well pronounced just take it again you can easily use your punching and punch out to identify that spot then have him sing the entire thing again it will not record anything else just only that spot that you put the punch in and punch out that's how this works now another cool feature i need to talk about is when people are saying oh there is no place for them to actually set the uh loop feature on their you know timeline as they do let's say on the door now if you come back to your main that is what this is for the start and the end as you can even see this is there to tell you that this is your loop feature your start and the end so i can easily come and say you know what i want it to start from bar one well, bar two and i want it to stop at bar three by doing so if i come back to my grid view you can see that that blue line has moved from the beginning to the end it has now moved to this place from two to four instead of from one to the end of four do you understand so instead of it to now play even if you use the play start it will not play from the beginning it's just play from the start of the loop to the end of the loop do you get so this is something that you also need to take note and it can actually help you a lot if you are trying to get a hang of a particular section of your job and then you basically just need to just look through that part and fix some things there that will help you pretty well let's go back here let me take this back because there's still something i need to show you which is very very important we we'll call that the auto record now while you are here you still have your punch in and punch out enabled which means anything any recording i want to do it will not record outside of that punch in and punch out that's how you know you see in enabled so uh let's now come here if you take it off that means you are at liberty to record anywhere right if it's in only the space between the punching and the punch out will be record active but if you have this enabled now what does this do let's enable it now this auto record now what it does is if it is on it will allow as you can see immediately i enable the auto record the red you know portion disappears which means this also will record everything it can record anywhere but the good thing about this is it will only record after it has played the first time it will not record immediately you start playing it let me show you something i need to yeah let me just take this out let me take everything out it will be better to show you that i take it out Okay, now, yeah, we've taken it out. Go back to the beginning. And take this back here. I don't like to leave it on delete, so I don't so I don't delete anything by mistake. Check this out. While it's here, if I hit record, let me take it off. If I hit the record and then I hit play start, I can record right away, right? right stop now let me undo that let me show you something while it is still off if i press play then i press record play start and i press record play start then i press record you see the event still gets recorded i pressed play start then i press record I didn't press record first before I press play start. So it means any one I press before the other, it will record as far as I do not enable any feature of the locate button. If I now come to the locate parameter and I enable this auto record, now see what happens. Let me undo this again. See what happens now. If I press record first, then I press play start. Check this out. Now with auto record start enabled, what happens is if I press the play start, I have to press the play start first before I hit the record. Then if I should press the play and I press the record, it doesn't matter if I press the record first. If it is play, it will definitely 
just play the entire sequence first or the entire region first before coming back to record but if it is play start i have to make sure i press the play start first before i press the record and that is the only way it will ensure that it moves through the entire sequence or the selected region first before coming back to record it because it's actually attached to the next start of the entire sequence so let's um do that now if i hit play start you see what happens play start and i hit record anything i press will not work until i until it comes back now because i press record it's wiping off everything i've done before Do you see that? So basically, it it cleared everything I've done before, and then it's trying to put in a new one because I use record. If I use overdub, it will not do that. Let's undo. Now that is basically because I use play start. Now if I hit record and I use play, it doesn't matter. It will play to the end, and then you understand. Let me don't use this. I don't want to wipe out this. So let me just use overdub and then play. Do you see that? So that is basically the difference between the play and the play start. Play it doesn't really matter if you press record first or you press the record after you start using your play. As long as your auto record start is enabled, it will play everything to the end without recording it and come back and start recording. Yeah. So those are just the basic feature and the functionalities of your locate button. You know, this start end that we have here is just to jump. If I use, I can use start to jump between bars, as you can see then this event can actually help me to jump in between those events that i've set up and we're talking about uh by the event i mean you know, we're talking about ticks it's moving in ticks here right but that is the tick that is set by my region if you come to your uh, timing correct because i set this to one sixteenth of a note right so we have 16 um event spots within this bar so that is why you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15, 16, 16. Yeah, that's basically what it is. So if I change this to, if I change my timing correct, I move this to 32, right? Or I can also do that, you know, with my uh, knob here, with the Q link. If I change my time division to maybe 164, then this event will move slower. It will be moving in between each of those events where they are supposed to be placement. Not the one I put in, but the event that is actually active on the time division. That's what we're talking about. So that's what this does on a grander level. So 1 to 16, I'll leave it here, and this can move this way. So you can use this to just fine tune. Then when you come here and you now hit locate, it is that particular spot that you select that will be there as your locate. Do you understand? So that's basically you know, how this works. And it's very helpful, especially when I'm taking audio in. That's where I get to use it a lot. And for those people who are keyboardists, maybe you actually play the particular synth and it's awesome. You made a mistake, like what you have here right now. Something here. And you really want to just, you don't want to stress yourself. You can just punch in, punch out. And while you are playing everything all over again, if you have your punch in, punch out enabled, it will not disrupt what you have here. It will basically just overwrite what is here alone and then continue again not to disrupt the rest of the things that are there so punch in punch out very awesome feature that'll be all for now don't forget to like subscribe and share it out in the comment section below